Hi peeps, I'm back. I don't know what day it is. 19, 21, something of, um, what is it? Social distancing? I think it's personal distancing, physical distancing. Um, video number two. You saw the image already. I honestly don't really know what I'm painting yet at this point. I will paint the image and then put it in front of the video so that you can choose to paint it or not. Quick little update. This is only the second one in three weeks. And uh, just like many of you most likely have, I've had a pretty rough three weeks. In a matter of one hour, my entire life was turned upside down. Everything was canceled. All of my work gone. Well, at least one has been canceled. The others have been indefinitely postponed. Just like many of uh, us, what we are called giggers, self-employed, sole proprietors. Anyways, it was a pretty rough for a couple of three weeks. Um, every single day that was really, really nice outside. I spent in the garden and in the greenhouse. But then there were those days where it got cold and rainy and much like today, got a fire going. Actually, have one uh, one more thing that you need to have, or well, should have, can have. I recommend it. Look at this. <laughs> um, a must-have tonight for me. Fire is uh, nice and warm. The wind is howling outside, and uh, I was honestly very, very touched by all the emails, all the messages, all the photographs I've gotten after my last video. That was pretty overwhelming. So thank you for that. But honestly, I found myself thinking that the kind of work that I do and that I have done for 25 years had no place in this time of our lives and because some look at it as a privilege some look at it as a luxury some um, some look at it as something not essential <laughs> well that all changed in my mind because I think I was wrong about that what we now need more than ever is a place to escape even if it is in our minds. Um, we need beauty and hope and joy and um, a place to shut off our heads, shut off our brains for just a little bit and be calm and not have to think about everything that's going on. Um, today is the day that Governor Whitmer just extended the stay-at-home order um, with that, I also saw on the news that from here on out, nothing non-essential will be sold at the stores anymore. Trust me, I have quite a supply of paints and canvases. <laughs> well, and then there's always online, too. So, I don't know how much of this I will put in front of the video. You can always fast forward. That's the beautiful thing about it. You don't have to listen to me schmooze. <laughs> but you can if you like. There will also be... Um, another series of videos coming out, hopefully, that I'm just simply going to call Thinking Out Loud. And it's just going to be thoughts that spook through my head um, from something that I've seen that day, heard that day, uh, read that day, that kind of started me spinning a little bit uh, throughout the day. So anyways, without further ado, here we go. I have put a list of materials, colors, that we need underneath the description in the video. Also, I do want to keep these videos free for anyone to paint. Um, however, I have been asked numerous times now how people can pay me. <laughs> um, I don't have an income at the moment. I don't want these videos to be required to be paid. However, if you would like to virtually take me out for a cup of coffee or out for lunch or uh, whatever you would like, 
there is a link in the description below on the video um, where you can donate or contribute to my um, well-being I guess at the at the current time so if you would like to pay a little bit it is highly appreciated if you can't that is okay too I still appreciate everyone watching and painting with me so enough talk those of you who painted with me <laughs> you know that I'd like to do that. So well, here we go. I'm going to put my wine down. I'm going to get my paint ready. Three, two, one. Let's go. So the very first thing that we want to do, if you feel more comfortable using a template for the cage-like contraption on here, there's a very simple way of doing that. You don't have to have a template. You can freehand it. Um, I will do both just so that I can show you both, but here we go. This little doohickey, simple, plain piece of printing paper. Now, if you cut this out all the way around, odds are that this will be crooked. And knowing a lot of you, it can be crooked. I know how you are. You want everything to be nice and neat and clean. So there's a very simple trick to this. You take your paper, fold it in half, just like that. And take a pair of scissors right here. And here's my folded side. Here's just the open side. Here's the folded side. And we are going to simply cut on the one side, kind of like the corner off in a half round. Just like that. See that? And when you unfold it, you have the shape of a birdcage just like that. So if you want to do this, pause now, rewind and do it. Um, if you just want to freehand it, that's fine. I think I'm going to, you can, uh, you know, for those engineers here <laughs> and the left brainers, you can kind of place it in the center. You know how I am. I don't really like to put everything in center and even and all of that. Um, we will paint a dove up here. If you are planning on painting that, um, you might want to hang the cage a little bit sideways. So it's almost like a dove in flight is carrying it. So I'm going to go a little lower, put a little crooked, and then mark it. Lightly, folks. There's no need of pushing really, really hard and getting this on here. We just want the general shape very lightly. I don't know if you can see it. You don't need to see it. I need to see it. So you just want to go really lightly right on here and make the general shape of the birdcage. So that's that. Off to painting. So the first few colors that I'm using is a dark blue, navy blue. Uh, just a dark blue. You don't have to buy a specific name of a color. A dark green, black and white, just a little bit. So the idea is to paint everything around the cage really dark, gloomy, um, but in a fun way. So my base color is the dark blue, and this is where you get to play. Put some blue on, add a little green here and there. And this is where you can either blend super nice, super dear, super fine, or you can just make really bold brush strokes. Take a little bit of white and add some hues of the same color, different shades, just like this, more green. And I am not brushing, I'm not washing my brush in between here. I am just going from color to color be generous remember we need a lot of paint with acrylics it takes uh, very little time to dry and we need a lot of coverage at the same time if you don't use enough paint and you start scraping it you shouldn't carry your brush make sure that you have a nice soft smooth um, application 
if you hear your brush, you don't have enough paint on it. Your brush does not dispense paint, it only carries it from A to B. It's not like a marker. Paint your edges right here to have a nicely finished gallery rep canvas. It doesn't have to be perfect on these edges, but it shouldn't be white. It will look really strange if you have it white. So I'm going to just kind of apply this first layer quickly because I want a second one. The second layer, now that we have time and we don't have to get everything done in um, a set amount of hours, uh, the second layer will make for a much richer color. Actually, um, sometimes I put as many as seven or eight layers on paintings, if not more. So be bold. The second layer will involve even a little bit of black in here. <gasps> oh, black. <laughs> we are all afraid of black. Because black is not a color. And it can make or break your painting very quickly. So, here we go. I'm going to kind of change my general shape a little bit. I'm also going to add a little bit of white just for some interest in between. Don't overbrush if you want this bold pattern look, the textured look, but by all means you can blend in really nice, real super fine. And I wouldn't worry too much right now about this edge because um, we can straighten it up a little bit later. See this little bump and bump doesn't matter. Again, if you're working on a little bitty table easel or on the table itself, it doesn't matter what, what you do um, or where you paint, but do make your paintings and your tools work for you. Turn it. Actually, I'm going to turn it this way. It's easier to reach. Turn your tools and your equipment instead of you turning yourself and contort. I have seen way too many people kneel on concrete floor because it feels more comfortable to paint in a certain direction than it does in another direction. But you don't need to... Checking. Make sure my camera is not off. It does that. Here we go. A little bit more down here and the bottom edge. Setting the painting on the white edge is not going to hurt it. Makes your easel look really cool or your tablecloth cover. Uh, a little bit more green, a little bit more white. Brush the white in just a little. Well, you don't have to, but that will prevent streaking. And that's that. Now we're going to let this dry. Well, we're going to let this dry. I'm going to have some wine. Don't forget to turn on some good music. And um, turn this around again. And then come back a second time. To put a second coat on and define it a little bit more. See you in a minute. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is cut in the dove that's going to carry this cage and it needs to go up here but the dimensions 
of a dove are very large wings to a rather small body, any bird for that matter. And most people get it wrong as to they um, simply make the wings too small. So we're going to cut this in and we're going to do this before the second coat because if you have a whoopsie, then we can still fix the whoopsie. Uh -huh. Here we go. White paint, smaller brushes. This, this is the medium sized brush, the smaller flat one. The first one here, I forgot to tell you, was actually the wider flat brush. There we go. The feet of the dove are carrying the little, you know, um, chain that's on here. So we're going to mark right up here. We're going to mark where the feet are going to be so that we know uh, how to put the body in. And um, the shape of the dove is kind of a little shallow U shape that starts up here. Well, let's not make it too big. Starts up here about there. Little U shape to get to the feet and then kind of levels out like so. We can change this. Remember, it's just paint. If you feel more comfortable doing this with a chalk pencil or a regular pencil, by all means do it. I would not recommend it because you will either see erasing marks or you'll see the pencil marks through or um, this cup this paint is not quite yet cured so do it with your brush I dare you you can do it right here where the neck will be the back arches just slightly up like so it goes past past the feet area Again, we're just cutting in, remember? Here's the neck, here's the belly. Looks to me like the belly will have to be a little bit wider. We have to have enough room for the wings right here, so you need to make sure that you have enough space up there. Up here, we're going to put a little bitty head just to cut things in. And I think we need to make the belly just a little heavier, like so. Here's our feet. Here's the back and where the tail will begin, right there. Cutting it in. The wings start right below the neck. Here's the neck. Here's the wing. <coughs> There's the elbow. They have an elbow. And then we go way up here. And from this area on, we need to reach this. This is the arch. So we kind of just want to cut this to an imaginary center point. Again, we're just cutting in. We're just figuring out where the stuff is going to be. Now the wings have several layers. So these are the outer feathers. There's a second layer right here of feathers. And we don't have to paint them very accurately. I'm not using enough paint. Can you hear me scrape? And then here, right at the elbow, there's like a little, I guess for a dog it would be a douche flaw. And here's the third layer. Just for the cutting in part at the moment. We actually need to paint it a little bit off the edge here, which is okay. <coughs> and then the second one, right up the head here, we're going to put one feather out and then we're going to arch this all the way to the elbow right here 
this is just our outline. We'll go a little bit higher and then we're going to cut this in again. The feathers will all kind of meet at this point. I'm going to paint my dots here. I don't want to show them. Like so. Yeah, this one needs to go just a little farther out. And then the tail. They have kind of a funky tail. <coughs> Remember? Here, actually, this right here goes like so. Here's the tail. It kind of starts spreading again. It has like a little round doohickey here. We can fill this in, by the way. Just a little. Remember, here's our feet. Leave an area so you remember where they need to go. Only cutting in. We'll work on this later. And make it more uh, dove-like. <laughs> and then the feather, the tail feathers are kind of a circular thing coming toward that little round doohickey. Goes all the way back here. So here's this little round edge, like so. So here's the, the wing. You can do this. Go back on the video if you need to watch it a couple more times. Here's the one. Here's the back, head, belly, feet right here. Tail. We'll work on all that. So there's that. Uh, cutting it in. We just need to know where what goes, and we'll leave it at that. And now we'll go back to the background. Because remember, we can still paint over this a little bit. But I am going to put my brush in the water and grab the other one that's sitting in the water and put a second layer on this background. By the way, I upped the light a little. Um, I don't know how much of the blue will show, but I will take the actual photograph of the painting in the correct light so you can refer back to it. You can take a screenshot of it and that way you can look at it while you're uh, watching the video. So brushes in water, out of water, exchange. Here we are. I've got my uh, wide flat. Again, I'm going to put all the materials on the bottom of this video underneath in the description. Um, make sure if you had it sitting in water that it is as dry as you can get it. Um, preferably you only wiped it with your paper towel and um, it still has a lot of paint in it. What we want to do is go back over, lighten the area around the cage a little bit, and then play with the in-flight motion. So we don't want to do a coloring book look so much. You can drag some of the white into the blue and make it look like the, the dove is flying. So I've got my paint. I'm going to go and start on the um, perimeter right around the cage because they're my lightest colors. And then I'm going to work my way out to the outer edges because now I want to add a little bit of black. And don't worry so much, you still got your main outline for the dove right now. Don't worry about it so much painting into it because we'll worry about the dove later. Blue. See now there's going to be a lot more strength in this color. I'm going to add some white. Just going to go all the way around. The beautiful thing is that we don't have to be perfectly covering because we already have a coat underneath. So go back and forth between blue and green and white. Here obviously we want to make sure we get enough of a color difference to where the duff is going to show later. Maybe some stronger brush strokes in here. 
a little bit of green over on this side. My paint is drying super duper fast with the fireplace going in the back. <clears throat> Here I want to not turn it at the moment because, whoops, just put it on the edge. Because I want to make sure that I get the overall view and can tell how this thing looks right side up. So now I'm going to work my way away from this. Next layer, blue again. Some green. Well, maybe you want to put a little twirly in here too and not brush it out. Because why not? Here, let's worry about this in a minute. Maybe some green twirly. Doesn't want to do what I want it. Here we go. Be bold. Put it on there. When you get here, you can get in between the feathers. And here we go. Here, my paint is still white. So here we can now make some movement and incorporate it into the background, actually, which is kind of fun. Go in between here. Some green. I'm going to do some more white. And fingers. Fingers are good. The wings will be solid, the feathers will be solid, so going in there a little bit right now is not going to hurt the bird in the end. But anything you stretch out above beyond the feathers, you want to really blend that in. If you want to put a little bit of movement into here. <coughs> and then at the very outer edge, take a tiny little corner of black and add that, but be careful because the black wants to really take over. You go with just a little bit and then add more to it later once you know what it does. Also adjust that around the edge, just that corner, the wrap. Let's see. I have to work quickly is drying so fast and we can add more white streaks later too. I'm going to try to make this a little bit whimsical. Going down to the corner right here, nice and dark on the outer edge. And now some black. The black and the dark colors are going to want to kind of creep into your lighter colors toward the center. So go easy. Add a little bit of white if it gets too dark too fast. Nice texture though. We want a lot of texture in this thing. This is going to be all about opposing textures. Oops, that's a little gray. A little green. in between those feathers. You don't want to have many, many gaps or anything like that right here. And now I am going to turn because I need this corner. The white gesso is still showing through quite a lot and the color is not very covering because of the types of paints that we use. 
that's okay. Because we can always add second coats, third coats, especially now that we don't have only three hours to do it. You can let this st sit, you can come back to it, you can run and throw the laundry in. You gotta see the perks, you know? There's good sides to this. When you add white or any, any color to another color, as a matter of fact, do make sure that the paint underneath is still wet. If it's not, then you can't blend. I see that very, very often in my classes where people are trying to lighten something up with one color on top of a dry paint. It's not going to happen. So if you have an area that you want to lighten up, let's say I want to light this up, even though it's counterintuitive, you do want to go back over with some dark blue first just to get this place wet. Then go over with white over top of that. A little bit of green, white again, but it has to be wet underneath. You cannot blend otherwise. <clears throat> so I'm pretty happy with the look of this right now. And we are at the stage again where we need to let this dry. Okay, let's do that. Drying. Go get some more wine. So, um, <coughs> so I did a thing outside. I did not want to do this in here. And uh, it was way too dark right now outside to take the camera with me for a video. But find an old toothbrush. I cleaned it with some uh, hydrogen peroxide or some Clarks or whatever. It's just an old used one um, that I keep around. And splatter. Lay this painting flat on the ground. Dunk your bristles into the paint. And then just splatter it on here. I had a couple of pretty big splatters. Um, I will do something with that. That's okay. But what you do want to do is once you have this done, kind of have that little out of space look thing going, um, you do want to let this dry on a flat surface. This is pretty dry. It's not going to drip, but it might have. Um, and I mean, I have what I have. We're going to work with it. And I can't take them back out unless I repaint the whole thing over again. So we'll figure out what to do with those little doohickeys. But do the toothbrush splatter. It's kind of fun to do. And, uh, and then let that dry again. And then we'll continue on. Uh, yeah. It's dripping. Turn it upside down. It's still wanting to run a little bit. Um, take a blow dryer. I have a blow dryer. All the things. Not required, oh, not required if you have enough time, um, but I want to keep painting, so you can also keep turning it around. I was hoping it would kind of splatter, the air would splatter the paint, but it doesn't because it is a little bit too viscous. Um, but now we're going to keep going. What you want to do next is clean up the cage. There's, two, there's several ways of doing it, and I want you to do it the way you like it. You can have a really sharp edge around it, um, which I think seems to be my thing. I'm going to kind of go over with some white paint, clean up this edge that we painted earlier, and some of the paint will, sh will shine through some of the dark paint, and that's okay. But I just want to get a nice clean edge right here. And 
I kind of want to reshape it just a little to make it a little bit more whimsical, like so. Go on the other side. This paint underneath will shine through no matter what you do, especially on your first coat. So I put a little bit of a arch in here, so it's not so tall. It looks almost like a, oh, look at the green underneath is melting. Looks almost like a jellyfish. okay. I'm glad we had the general shape earlier because it looks nice and even now. I just want to make this a little more faint is all. The paint underneath. It doesn't matter how thick you put it on there. It's still going to shine through once it dries. It would need several layers. And we are probably going to put two on, just to make sure that the lighter colors that we're about to apply are not going to bleed through. So while we're at it, we might as well put another coat of white on the dove, because it will require numerous coats. So here is the wing. Remember the layers of feathers. Here's the outer one. And then the one in the middle right here. We will paint this in a little bit more detail later again, but don't just cover it all in white because you do want to kind of see some of the distinctions right there. just a second coat so that we get better coverage for the final coat where we do a little bit of shading so it actually looks a little bit more realistic so this whole shape here looks reminds me somehow of a um, bowling pin <laughs> kind of has a general shape of a bowling pin right here And then the back, <laughs> it looks pretty um, like a paintbrush having a bad hair day back here. So we do want to kind of clean that up. So here is a little round doohickey at the end of the tail. And then we want to add the feathers, this time a little cleaner. Make sure you have enough paint on your brush. It's kind of like a little sun. All the feathers go toward the inside there. Kind of fun little painting here. I want to make the tip a little bit longer because they do have wing would come up all the way to here. So we'll leave that by now. My um, paint is dripping, so I'm going to turn it around again. I already know where I'm painting. This is all dry already, so I'm going to put a second layer in just to hide this just a little bit more. <coughs> the dark paint underneath.
I do not know how well this is visible in this kind of light, but I have to say that I actually prefer painting in this light. Recording is a whole other can of worms, <laughs> but uh, it's a very soft overhead. Um, what is it? Like a beam? So we have a little bit more coverage now, and a little bit of shadow won't hurt. We don't need to do a third coat, even if you have a little bit more shining through, it's okay. It almost looks like a bell. Alright, so, my blow dryer. try again. I just have to keep an eye on my blobs because I don't want them running everywhere. So, drying time again. All right, here we are again. Make sure your painting is right side up and we're going to paint a little seascape right in here. <coughs> Remember the rules of thirds. So, the bottom third will be water and reflections, and the top third will be sky and sunset. Um, we just imagine right here that there's our horizon, the horizon line. Now what's important is that you put your horizon line, mine is a little arch down here, but you want to keep this, regardless of the, sh of the shape of the, or the position of the canvas, you want to keep this parallel to this line, not parallel to this line, okay? So, um, what we're going to do is, I have new colors, and they're kind of like an ochre yellow, and like a dark dull mustard yellow, and some brown. We need some white and some black. So, um, the top part, We'll start painting yellow, and I have my medium brush here. You could use a bigger one, but we're going to put, you know, several coats on here, so even if you have a few little streaks in the first one, um, that's okay. I'm just going to paint this yellow for the time being. And even if you have a little hint of the background, it's not going to matter, like right here, because we're going to tint this here in a minute. Let's just get some yellow on here, so our horizon line will be right about here, pretty much parallel to that line, not this line. So if you put a water level on there, it won't be straight. Lots of paint. Brush it out. Just get our first coat on here. Some coverage. Whoops. There we go. A little uh, oopsie. Take your time. If you want this nice crisp edge, you could really paint this edge with a little bit of white blue and a little bit of um, wet yellow and then just rub it in with your fingers. I kind of want, I keep, keep finding that I use, I tend to use a lot of really crisp lines. So here's going to be our horizon line back here. This is going to be sky. Whoops. <laughs> And this is water. Now, because I just put a coat on randomly, it doesn't really matter how what direction you paint it, but the water is important. So what we want to do there 
is paint it in the same direction of your horizon line, in little lines back and forth. I'm going to start with a little bit of yellow. Now right here, we're going to paint a huge big sinking moon, sun, whatever you want to call it. Um, so this will be reflected in the water. So right below this is where your reflection will be lighter. We're going to do a little bit of um, yellow, all these little sideways strokes. Whoops, now I have these here. Let's hide them. Some white. And leave them streaky. Right here on this edge, I need to be nice and crisp. As this is wet, and this is important, keep it wet. You can work in little sections if you don't want to work so fast. Uh, add some brown. Some brown. And we want to blend this in with the white and the yellow, but we want to keep it horizontal to the horizon line. I'm going to darken this side. See, the more you, you keep rubbing over top of it, the more you keep blending it, the softer the colors will get. I do want a sharper edge. And then we'll keep going over it with more brown until you get it as dark as you want it. So we're going to keep painting completely horizontally in the water area. <coughs> and you want to drag the colors into each other so that we don't end up with a straight line. It's darker here, it'll be darker here. It's going to try to get to this edge in a clean way. And then immediately drag it horizontally. Horizontal E to the horizon, horizon. <laughs> so first with some yellow, then with some brown. Use your brush sideways so you don't paint with the width but with the smaller edge. You can get nice and thin lines with that. You can also do little guys, like if you make short little lines like this some with brown, some with yellow, then your water will look slightly choppier and not as flat and smooth and calm. Play with this. See what you like. <coughs> See what you like best to paint as well as what you like the look of. Make this yours. Obviously the idea is um, not the idea of the thought behind this painting will be very much being caged. Not being able to go anywhere. Maybe we should call this um, something like isolation painting number one.
Let's just hope there's not going to be too many more. I'm using yellow now, putting them a little bit here and there. So we don't end up um, with straight lines anywhere. We want a gradual lightening and darkening. Remember, I'm going to paint our sinking sun or rising moon. And right underneath this is where I am um, keeping it the lightest. And this is where I, whoops, the one thing I always tell you, don't hold your plate crooked. I'm going to squeeze my brush dry because I want a little bit of yellow in here so that it's not uh, too clean of the white. Here comes the white, which is the, the brightest reflection. And we will paint it right here. See how it's not really all that white? It's picking up yellow from underneath and also from the brush. You want lots of fresh paint on here because if you just keep moving the same paint um, around then you lose the crisp colors. It'll just turn into a light brown yellow altogether instead of having yellow and white and some brown show up. So there. <coughs> Squeezing my brush again. And now we're going to put in the second layer here in the sky. Remember we just painted the first one just to get some coverage and have it not so white. This time, let's paint some area yellow and then immediately go over it with white. Don't want to over blend this now because we don't want to end up with one solid color. We want to end up with multiple colors, different, different hues. It is very, very rare that a sky is completely smoothly one color. Over here on these outer edges, farthest away from the sun, slash moon, slash whatever it is that is falling into or rising out of the water, now we're going to add a little bit of brown. Over top of the yellow, and this one, we really want to blend. So not as choppy as down there. We want this to be kind of uneven. So it's pulling in here. It's kind of those wispy little clouds that are making the sky darker in some areas. You can use your finger too to smooth it a bit. It's really light here on this edge. I want it dark. <coughs> Let's do the same here. I have a dirty brush. It's just a few little wispy clouds. A little bit of more brown in here. It's one of those sunsets that's kind of dulled a little bit. Finger. Nice and smooth. And not over blended, so we want some darker spots. Still a little damp. Be careful in how hard you rub on the canvas because you will otherwise kind of melt the paint that's underneath instead of adding a layer. Very, very gently. 
both with a brush and with your finger. I've noticed that almost everyone uses way too much pressure on their brush. You're tickling the canvas. You're just it's like petting a butterfly. You want very little pressure on here. Just enough to apply paint. I think right now I'm going to <coughs> wipe my brush again, just with the paper towel, just squeeze it. Again, we want some yellow left, or brownish yellow left in here. Start, start with the white and start outlining your moon splash sun sinking slash rising. And what works really well for this, if you feel a little bit uneasy about painting a circle, make a very, very gentle outline of your coffee mug opening or your wine glass. Speaking of which, my coffee is AWOL. I must go find it. I don't know how well this is visible from the camera's perspective, but the uh, the white is not drying completely white, and that's good because we want this to actually have a slight yellow hue, can add a little bit of yellow. But again, let's not over blend. I'm deciding right now that this is actually the moon. I'm gonna soften the edges with my finger. So it becomes more of a glow than anything else. I want this to stand out just a little bit more against the back. And this is one of those moments to turn your painting. If you feel more comfortable painting on one side, it's the other side. Obviously turn it the other way. We have a strong side, just like our hair looks, just always turns out better on one side than it does on the other. So there. not a hundred percent round don't worry about it I'm gonna hide some of it a little bit okay let's see here now we need to add a little bit of a horizon and this is where you can play I'll show you a couple of little tricks I'm gonna use brown flat straight dark brown <coughs> for now Make sure you paint a nice, sharp edge. Do not use a ruler. I know you're thinking about it. Don't do it. <laughs> so, little hills look like this in the distance. That's what we have here in Michigan just in the far distance, some rolling hills. Make sure they're not symmetric. So they look different on the side than they do on this side. And they're off in the distance. You can paint little tree lines by softening this top edge. Use your brush for little round strokes. Softens it. Makes it look like there's little trees 
way in the distance. And then we'll take a tiny little bag, roll it around with some brown in an empty well, so you get a darker brown, almost like a burnt umber. And we'll make this a little bit more textured, like there's trees. I don't think we should use straight up black. I think that's going to be too much of a, of a um, contrast. Remember your bottom line needs to be nice and straight, but your tree line on the top should be a little lumpy and bumpy. So there's that. Yeah, now we need to go and wash the brush. Actually, water. Use water. Um, because we need to go and paint the dove for a bit. And then right under here, this, those last little under feathers and a little bit oh that's not blue enough a little bit down here where the um, tail feathers start so there empty out my brush and a lot of paint in there it's quite blue <coughs> but what we need to do is create shadows between the light and the shadow of the valley, so the, where the sun would hit. So squeeze your brush really dry or wash it. And then we go straight back into the white, just the white. <coughs> and paint this upper edge of the wing. Blend this in a little so that it's not a line. See how this is now showing up against that a lot better. And then here we'll paint into the wet blue. the first layer. Here comes the second layer. And then the outer wing the feathers. Feathers. Make sure you use enough um, paint on this. These feathers are quite thick. I'm using the narrow edge. Set it down and push a little bit harder. And our wingtip Unfortunately, didn't quite make it. It's going to be up here. We'll do the same thing on the tail feathers. Pull them in. Maybe soften this a little bit. Do this here. The second wing. We don't need to paint each individual feather in shadows and um, exact anatomy. We just, because our brain already knows these are the feathers of a bird. And then we have to put these, this upper edge <coughs> of the bird quite bright so that it shows up against the shadow.
you want to blend this so that we don't have a straight line between the um, between the shadows and the highlights. So we still have a white bird, partially because we know it's white, but we have a nice shadow right here on the belly. I'm going to make the head just a little higher. You have a little bit of blue left, light blue. <clears throat> Step back a little bit and play. Think of this as the armpit. This is the armpit. <coughs> a couple of little areas where I want to hide some gaps. But this is really all we need to do. White's not showing up after it dried up a little, put a second layer on there. <coughs> this is an arch. This is an arch. And then this is an arch. And then this is an arch. And it's round. So simple. It lets us recognize the bird as such. And because it's white, we know it's a dove. This does not have to be 100% anatomically correct. Trust me. Another thing you could do is find a picture of a dove online somewhere. Print it out, cut it out, and use it as a template if you like. That might work. Huh? So. That was good. I'm happy with that. Let's switch colors. Go clean your brushes with water this time. Oh, by the way, you can use this um, this small flat one for the next step, or you can use the small round brush. This guy here, even though it's white, will allow you to paint long, thin lines better than the tiny little brush. It holds more paint and you don't have to reload your brush. We have to make some quite long um, lines here pretty soon. But have your other, have both of your brushes, your brushes ready. This one and then the, the small little round one. Break time. So here we are again. And we are going to finish up the picture on the inside here with the two brushes, the small um, round and the flat. So what I want to do is pull some wispy clouds right over top of our moon slash sun. So we are going to go back into the yellow, put some yellow on here to get it wet, and then go in with a little bit of the brown over top of the yellow and we're going to pull these wispy clouds into the moon. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. A little yellow first. And again, I've told you this and I will keep telling you this. You can do any of the steps or I don't want to say none of them, because what's the point? But you pull, you, pu you pick the, the steps that you like and add the things that you like to your painting. And then leave out the rest. Make it yours. Have fun with this. So there. Huh? There's a couple of little wispy clouds. But now, 
looking at mine, I want this edge to be a lot stronger. So I'm going to go with my little bitty brush, paint only some of the exposed edges and then soften it toward the inside, but leave it nice and crisp on the outside. This is an itty bitty brush. Turn the painting so you can reach better. I just want my <coughs> spherical object in the sky to pop a little bit more than what um, than what it was. See what I'm what I'm saying is when I say it is really hard to paint long thin lines with a small brush because it keeps running out of paint. Is it roundish? I think so. I'm going to work on this for the next four hours now, trying to get it round. By the time I'm done, my moon will take over almost my entire painting. So don't feel bad if that's what happens to you, because it happens. So there. Cleaning my brush. And now I'm going to mix a little bit of the brown with a smidgen of black. So you really want a very dark brown or a not so black black. Mm -hmm. Makes any sense. Now we're going to do the unspeakable. We are going to paint some trees. Well, some branches. I like to hold my brush almost parallel to the painting. So don't paint in a 90 degree angle, but lay the brush flat. We're going to do two or three main branches. Make sure you barely touch the canvas because we don't want them to be too thick. And I'm holding my brush fairly far away in the back. Well, here goes the fireplace. I'll turn it off in a minute. And it will just drag it randomly. This is not black. It's very dark, but not black. And then these little branches come off in little Y's and they split. Obviously, it's a little heavier down here. You don't want this to be perfect. As a matter of fact, you want this to be a little crooked. And very uh, shaky. Do I another one right here? Splitting. Splitting the ends. Oh, that sounds horrible. Speaking of split ends, <laughs> who's been uh, getting their hair done lately? Not me. Let's put another one right here somewhere. Wait, let's do it maybe right here. These are really wispy in front of, well, in front of the moon and as, as we get a little higher on purpose. See, this line that needs to paint all the way, that's okay. Leave it. If you try to make it solid, then you end up with a beam. And it's okay to have it a little wispy. Because what we're after is the overall look of this painting. 
not each individual detail. It doesn't all have to be perfect. So, they grow on top of each other. And maybe one goes down like so. I have to keep mixing brown and black and running out. It makes quite a lot of things. Split them in little wides, make them crisscross. It's like a little pre spring bush growing over here. Just a little. Super wispy, barely touching the canvas. There, let's just leave that. Cleaning the brush by wiping at the moment. And then I have a little bit of, of red and white in here. Together with some brown, we're going to mix the feet and the beak. But I have to zoom out first. So here I go. All right, hello, I'm back. So let's mix some pink. Here goes my white, it's all shot now. And I'm going to paint a beak, quite a long beak. But the beak does not stop at the edge of the head. The beak actually goes in a little bit. elbow, well, knee, going backwards. The other one will be on the other side. We're not going to paint the feet just yet, but um, we just need a little indication of what is where. The eye, so the beak is actually like a diamond shape. It's not a triangle. And the eye is your... We have some movement in the dove like cool so i'm going to use my brush now not the back and i'm going to do some of the same kind of stuff with some of these blobs so here's an almost round one so i make another one a little smaller a little smaller and getting smaller as i get away i make them a little smaller don't have to be perfect There we go. Some here. Maybe one right here. I'm kind of using the same pattern that I, that my blobs created for me. And now while we're at it, maybe we'll just add another. There. Well hidden. <laughs> what we want to do now is paint the cage. Several options. Little brush. Short lines that you have to keep loading and add more paint to or medium size brush i'm actually using a water jar isn't that something oh hang on i was going to turn off the fireplace 
Be right back. Yeah, isn't it funny that <laughs> once um, you get used to something, you don't hear it anymore. The fireplace, the blower was coming on. It's cold outside today. Anyways, or you can use your medium brush. Keep squeezing the bristles and then paint thin lines. We can also try Sharpies. But the thing about Sharpies is that they don't like to paint or draw on fresh acrylic paint for whatever reason. So you can try. First off, I want to find the center pretty much and draw the circle. See, it's not wanting to. I'm going to use my brush. Sorry, folks. You may want to thin your paint a little bit for this put a little water in there so it's flowier. But the most important part of this is for sure to keep squeezing your brush. By far the most important thing, you've got to keep this edge sharp. So paint a little and squeeze. Paint a little, squeeze. <laughs> now, this can be a little daunting, but the idea is to paint a whimsical, a whimsical something. So you do not need to stay on the edge. You don't have, you have to have straight lines. I'm just going to do my mm, ma main lines with this, and it's not doing what I want it to. It's uneven, it's not perfect, and it's perfectly fine that way. So the next one, oh, they always start right here on the top and the center. And the next one goes down. And so on. If you want to take the time, you can most definitely outline this with pencil first. See, they're not even. They don't need to be. Once you get to about the center, then you've got to start swinging the opposite direction a little bit. want to do a couple, one here on the bottom, the one on the top or the two, I want to do two on the top, and they need to swing up a little, don't paint a straight line across, so this one let it swing up just slightly, I'm going to add a second one, there, and it doesn't have to be perfect. See how thin this is here? It's kind of a little thicker there. We're going to keep embellishing. I'm going to switch over to my little brush now. Going back to the little guy because I want to add little things. This can come through. Um, here's my circle, the top circle. This is where you play. Put this to the edge. Eh. 
This is a little tricky because this easel is made for hand whistles that are up to two inches deep. So it's hard to even get here. I need my paint watered down so that it flows a little bit better. Oh, and then we could do, well, let's finish up here. Oh, and then why not? Aha! This is where you paint your own. I'm only going to do <coughs> a few more little wispies down here and then this can very easily be overdone but um, it is what it is we just need to enjoy it. Now remember, we have only got this funky little knee here. I'm going to clean my brush with water because I want to go back to white. Coffee. Must have coffee. Are you still with me? You are. hide this just a little bit because it seems a little higher up but we want to go back and to our pink if you don't have it mix it again mine is dry already because now we need to put like little claws holding up this ring doesn't have to be anything fancy. Doesn't even have to look like gloss, trust me. The details don't matter. The overall look is what's important. But what I want to do now is mix a little bit of water into my white. And you could do this with a white Sharpie if you feel more comfortable with it. But see how now, um, our trees and then the cage and everything kind of flow together into one. I want to make them stand out a little bit more. And the white will actually not dry completely white. 
if white is painted on any kind of dark... Did you get that? Matching our decor at home with our paintings has become so unimportant. It truly is no longer a priority in life, at least not in mine. So there. Whimsical one today. Oh, let's paint this little circle. And the white paint gives the black almost a little glow. Damn busy you. No. The battery is not the greatest anymore of my old camera. Okay, there is such a thing as too much of a good thing, so why don't I leave this be, call it a day, call it done. See? It's one of those deals where you can just keep on adding and adding and adding and adding. But you can, and you can come back tomorrow if you like and add some more. I'm going to call this one done as soon as I'm finished right here. Bringing out the... Um, shadow and highlight differences just a little more. See how the white did not dry white white. But I want it to be white white. There. That's it. Sign it. Hang tight. <laughs>